Have you ever seen a fat person get laughed at for going to the gym? And I used to think I'd get laughed at for riding a bicycle outside. So I had this thought. I don't know when it was. I was listening to some fitness channel or something, and I was just thinking about things about somebody who's talking about people who mock people in gyms or I think he was analyzing, it might have been every damn day fitness, and he was analyzing the the way the trainers do in the, in the uh, what's it called, um, The Biggest Loser, how there's this different kind of mocking of people and this and that. And it's this, and he, he, but he was, he was going at them and he was telling them this is not good because what they're doing right here with their body size is actually risking their health more. And he was being critical and he was being analytical about it. And anyway, we just talked about how fat shaming, this fat shaming and these things being talked about. You look into fat shame movement, fat acceptance movements. They say, stop shaming us. We're allowed to do this. And then they had that one thing about the, 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 the fat mannequin. I, I don't know what, what kind of athletic uh, wear company was doing the fat mannequins and some people like this and then there's just a lot of things in the western society if you listen to this you probably heard some of these things with fat acceptance talking about we shouldn't fat shame and i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of i, I was morbidly obese not too long ago and i am recovering from that currently as i'm doing this i'm doing a cycle i do different dietary cycles but i know it's more about just the calories in calories out you're, you're in caloric deficit or you're maintaining or you're above and then you're also the amount of exercise that you actually do make sure you stand up more make sure you do these other things eat whole foods there's a there's a myriad of things that go into this and i think a big key part of it a key part that is very very underidentified very misunderstood and normally ignored is the mental aspect of this. There is a thing. When your body itself, the metabolism, the, the way your body works, it's all connected. If your body is in a stress type of situation, it's going to affect the metabolism. It's going to affect how you actually ingest food and things like this and how you deal with things. It just comes from being just like a basic evolutionary period when it was like, okay, if you're in a point of starvation, the chances are there's a war. Your body is going to treat things in a different way. It's going to react in a different way. If you're in a point of abundance, chances are things are okay, you're peaceful, so you're going to treat things in a different way. You're not going to store fat in the same way. These, these are things that are biological, and I'm just collecting a whole bunch of things trying to make sense of why this thought came to me. For me right now, I'm thinking, I was looking back at when I was morbidly obese. Some people were telling me, very few people in my life seem to actually discuss my weight. There was a few people, my mom for one, which I'm thankful for her, she would all of a sudden check in and like occasionally be like this and this, that and that, what's happening with this. And I would sometimes react in a negative way and say, oh, when my life gets better, I'll be able to handle this part of my life as well. But those things, which one is the horse for the cart? I don't know how the, how it goes. Like it, it's, it's, it's together. But once I started realizing how unhealthy I was, how 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 just harmful it was for me once I started valuing myself better and decided I'm going to work out, I'm going to do better for myself. It also involved improving my life. I don't know, I don't think one came before the other. It was just a decision at some time when that was like, okay. But I was feeling like, why didn't people talk about it before? Do people just not talk about it? Is it a whole fat shaming thing where people feel like, oh, if I point something out about you, you might point something out about me? I used to do that whole joke thing like, oh, like, oh, wow, you can cook. I'm like, yeah, of course I can cook. How else are you going to get this big without being able to cook? That'd be kind of selfish. But then a lot of people can't cook and they get big anyway. It's all about the calories, all these things. But anyway, I know I got over 350 pounds. That was the highest that I think I weighed myself. And there was different times, different fluctuations up and down over about a... I want to say a 10 to 12 year span where it was just out of control. And for the last couple of years, I've been improving, doing different cycles, getting down to a healthier uh, weight that I can maintain, aiming for a weight in my mind, probably around 200, 210. For my body size and frame, I think that would be a comfortable weight to maintain for a couple of years or even a couple of decades and then maybe see about dropping a little further down as I get to older age and things like that. Just for health, I think that could work for me. Now, I'm looking at this, and I'm, this, this thought, I remember specifically, there was a time when I was in Turin, after I had done my undergraduate already in graphic design, I went over there to take a course in uh, animation, and I had access to a bicycle. Now, Turin is a beautiful city. It's also rather small for, for a city. I mean, I guess these are all these things that kind of, um, 
I mean, Nairobi, Kenya right now, and it's about 4.5 million people in the entire Nairobi, Kenya. Turin itself was slightly under 1 million people, and I'd lived in Rome before that, so Rome was a lot bigger than Turin. But it's it's a beautiful little city. It had been the design capital of, of um, I think, Europe, actually. Uh, maybe in Europe or just Italy. I don't know. It's a beautiful city. You could walk across the metropolitan area, the main central metropolitan area, in about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your speed. But there was places on the outskirts further on, and I was thinking, right, let me get a bicycle. But at that point, I was still I was still a lot more beast than I am now. And I was still more in my mind. I still had this, the, the, mental, the mental blocks and this depression and the, the self-image issues and things like that. Because it was realistic. I was a beast. But I would be thinking, oh, I could exercise more on the bike because I've had some success previously with biking. Once I get on the bike, I can just bike for hours and hours and hours. And I like you can go a lot further on a bike than you can walking, even though I don't mind walking. I'm, right now, I do the walking thing. But with the bike thing, I would actually think that if I was with my fat self on that bike, like Fat Man on a little bike, like it was in the Fat Man Little Coat song. I don't know what it was. What was a Fat Man Little Coat? I think it might have been a skit from um, Saturday Night Live back in the day. But it was that was what I was thinking. I was thinking people would be pointing and laughing. They were like, oh, look at that fat person on a, on a bike. But then I'm also thinking, have I ever seen a fat person on a bike and laughed? Does that happen? When people talk about, I'm not going to the gym because if I go to the gym, and I'm wearing my outfit and I'm working out, people are going to laugh at me. I don't want to go to the gym. That's keeping me away from working out. And I'm just trying to ask you people out there, who has actually done that? Have you actually gone to the gym and been working out yourself and laughed at somebody? I know once I went back and been doing back in the gym, exercising and things like this, I don't look at fat people in the gym who come in and they're putting in the work and laugh. They, they might be somebody who slips and falls or does something in a goofy way, but that doesn't matter if you're fat or not. That's just you doing something in there that's actually off. There might be some teasing if somebody's dressed in a certain way, but that also goes across the board. It doesn't matter if somebody's obese or not. It's just, That's just the thing that I want to ask. In general, if you are an obese person, have you actually been laughed at while you are in the process, in the gym or in another process of trying to better yourself physically, trying to improve your health, or if you're a non-obese person, how many times have you personally seen an obese person who seems to be truly putting in effort to improve their physical health, deal with that issue, improve their body, and you felt the need to laugh at them? I, I, I guess... People who probably laugh at people might not put it in there because it's like you're putting your name out there. But I'm just, I'm just not thinking it's that, it's that frequent of a thing. I just, I feel it's something that's said that doesn't really happen as much. I feel if I had actually just gotten over that somehow and cycled and been out there, I would have enjoyed the city of Turin a lot more, and that would have been a lot. To, that would have been over a decade back in my past where I would have gotten healthier a lot earlier than I ended up doing and that could have changed some things in my life so I'm just saying out there first of all if somebody does I'm not saying people don't because people suck there's going to be people out there there's other reasons people might laugh for other reasons but first of all come it, it comes from you you're improving your health that person doesn't know you as much as you know you shouldn't know you as much as you know you can't know you as much as you can possibly know you, you can know you the most and if you're truly improving you're truly getting at it, then damn the minority of people that might actually laugh at you. Damn if the entire world laughs at you. If you're getting healthier, just get out there and do it. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of what I needed to hear or what would have helped me to hear at that time when I was fearing just being on my bike. And <laughs> the whole bike thing then... The bike was out, and then took the bike out sometime, and then I, somebody who was living in the apartment took the bike out, and then they didn't lock it up right, and one of the wheels was stolen, and the whole thing. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just trying to think, what would I have heard at that time that would have made me be like, okay, I'm getting over this? I don't know. I think what what I'll, I'd advise is what helped me finally get over it, was just start looking into the actual information about improving health and the risks that come with continuing to be obese. Being laughed at is a minor risk compared to the actual risks that you're putting yourself into. 
you get into better shape and then the people who really value your life that wouldn't laugh at you for improving yourself, you will start surrounding yourself with more of those people and you will be giving back to those people. Those people will end up valuing you more. You will value them more and you will get more value out of your relationships because you will be able to be alive longer with those people that do care about you and to hell with all those other people. I think that's one thing that I can say. And I'll close off with just the the, the weird thing about the, the fat people, you know, the whole jolly fat men thing, jolly fat people. That's one thing that I kind of realized afterwards. I just, it just feels better. I still have different issues in my life. Not every issue that I had when I was obese is not is gone now that I'm in better shape. Most of it is unrelated to it. But those things still happen. But being physically healthy, healthier while having those issues is a better state of life. It makes you happier. This whole, that whole trope of the jolly fat man is such a weird thing because I don't really think there's too many people who are truly obese who are actually happy or could be as happy if they had the same exact life situation but also had better health. So that's it for now. Like, share, and subscribe. It's part of my shorty series where I expand on short thoughts in video form and hope to engage you. I appreciate you taking your time to come listen. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this. If you're obese or if you're working out, if you're trying to improve your health and things like this, if you're underweight, if you're if you're into big big anorexia and you feel like you have to be in the gym, you're taking all these supplements too much, you're anorexic. There's, there's many physical issues that if you're trying to improve yourself, People might might object, and some of that, some of that, one last thing, some of that could be that by being in that negative place, part of being in that negative place where you don't have the support systems, where somebody can laugh at you, but it doesn't matter because you have cool enough friends, or the people around you themselves would mock you, and be like, hey, why are you stopping drinking? Why are you doing this? Why are you going to the gym? Why do you think, why are you trying to eat better? Why are you eating that salad? Why are you not doing this? They could also be enablers. And, and yeah, that's, it's just, it's not a good situation. Anyway, that's it for now. Till next time. Goodbye. Thank you.